Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for episode 6 of tier 10 to the top. It's a new season and it's a new league. We're now with the North West Counties Premier after doing the Invincible season last year, drawing just twice and lifting the FA Vars, where we played many of the teams that we're going to be facing this season in that competition. It's not all popcorn and unicorn though guys, the board still aren't backing me on the contract front, we can't offer proper deals so we're still at massive risk of losing our best quality players. I'm also struggling to find new players and staff so other clubs within the division are going to catch up with us quite quickly. But we're going to analyse all of that today and we're also going to play the first game of the season at home. Before we jump into the intro, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button if you're new around here. That way you get to see new episodes as and when they go live. And if you enjoy this one, why not give us a thumbs up? It really does help me and it takes just one click. Right guys, let's watch the intro. Right boys, a really quick catch up from last season, just in case some of you missed the end of the year. We went up with 104 points, scoring 135 goals, only drew two matches. We also lifted the FA Vars. This is the current squad now. By and large, it's pretty much the same as last season. But we're going to have a look at a couple of the additions. As for the new league, this is the season preview. We are 6-4 to four favourites. Next favourites are actually another team that got promoted from their league. That's Camel Laird, 1907. Interesting name. There's a couple of big teams in here, though. There's Warrington. Uh, they're one that stand out. Northwich, both of them, in fairness. Um, and I think Prescott got relegated. Yes, they did. They're a decent-sized team as well. You'll note that we've got no players in the Media Dream 11, which is a little bit weird considering we're 6-4 to four favourites. And on the key players list, there's a little bit of scrolling down before you get to any of our players, which is actually Kalu. Now, if you have a quick look at his stats, yes, good player, very good star ratings uh, from our coaches, but look at this lad. Not bad. Dale Jennings. Now, the name rang a bell to me. I thought, where's he from? And of course, it's the ex Tranmere youngster who ended up going to Bayern Munich and came back to England for Barnsley and the MK Dons. He's now at Runken Town. So, one hell of a signing for them. And the fact he's not even been paid a wage is freaking amazing. He is a winger, and last season he got 18 assists and 6 goals in this league. So, I'm not sure where Runken Town finished. But this lad looks tasty. I'd be half, chance, uh, half tempted to go in for him if he had any interest in joining us at all. Let's have a really quick look at the finances, guys. We're on 34 grand, almost 35 now. So really stabilised from last season. And despite the projection saying that we're going to be 45 grand in debt, I know, based on what happened last season, that that is not going to be the case whatsoever we've still got offers coming in for our biggest and best players but the players in large don't seem interested in moving away we did lose cameron healy at the very back end of last season he was a major loss to be honest a real consistent performer and while i preferred other players over him he was actually one of our best players i should have given him more game time in fairness but New signings. You all know I got Giorgio at the back end of last season as well, with the aim of maybe developing him a little bit and getting him into the first team. Well, he's come along, and I think it's time the Giant ended up getting some game time. So this year, this lad's going to be partnered alongside Owen, assuming Owen doesn't leave. Pedro Noveis or Nove, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I'm a little bit worried about his work rate uh, and general attitude, but you can't argue 14 for technique and 12 for first touch. He's got 13 flair, 12 decisions, and while he's not the quickest player, 
I think he's got a lot of class about him for the winger role. And we've really struggled to fill that role last season. We had Cliff at the start and then we brought Sewell in. Both really didn't take to it. So I'm going to try Pedro Nove from Romulus um, at the start of the season. See how we get on. The only other signing we got towards the back end of the season that you guys didn't see is Conjon. What a name that is. He's only 17 years old. Uh, he's from Kids Grove initially in the Pitching League where he got 20 appearances last season and seven clean sheets. So not a bad little player. Uh, terrible decisions, not a good touch, a few weak areas. But he can certainly challenge Saunders, the only real player we've got in the team for that number one jersey. The only other signing we got was Stuart Crilly. This lad could be, I think, a really good player for us. He's only 18 years old, he's a central midfielder, and he's just got an all-round game. He can't really travel with the ball, but he can do the general playmaker role. He's got decent all-round physicals, mentals, and just good technique and passing. So he's going to play probably second fiddle in that ball-winning midfielder role, I think. As for staff, we have made a couple of signings. I brought in Danny Meadowcroft um, as a coach. Absolutely awful. Prime example of what we're working with. This was the only coach, pretty much, who was interested in joining us. And I only got him because he's got good determination and we desperately needed more bodies. Dan Mehigan is pretty awful as a scout as well but best option I could get. I thought we may as well get him in. We've got a fitness coach, Kingdon. Five for fitness, four for motivating. This just gives you an idea of what we're having to deal with. And then Ronnie Orchard is the goalkeeping uh, coach because the last one we had was absolutely terrible. Max O'Sullivan, though, I just spotted him, brought him in as a scout. I'm quite excited about him, as excited as you can get about a scout, because he's got eight for both judging abilities, which is actually quite good for this level. So this guy may be a little bit handy in finding a couple of gems for us. And while we're on the subject of training, guys, let me quickly explain the approach to the season. It's going to be very similar to last year, where we're arranging a load of friendlies. Midweek, if we haven't got a game, a friendly will be arranged and we'll play the league game, obviously on the weekend. But during pre-season, the schedules I've been focusing on are like this attacking movement and teamwork or it'd be something like teamwork and defensive shape or attacking movement and defensive shape before the weekend game basically vital to get that match prep in on the tuesday we've been doing physical work and match tactics the reason for that if you follow me into um a card is so Attacking movement will work on the player's individual roles. Now, we've been setting them up to train on individual roles, i.e. an advanced playmaker or poacher. Um, so that means they're going to train those attributes to improve as players. But it targets the upcoming game. It also targets tactical familiarity and team cohesion. All those things are vital. So match prep is a must. And getting a mixture of all three has really worked well for us. Match tactics gets up on the team cohesion and the tactical familiarity. So quite important to do that. And what I often find is they moan like hell about not having strength training. So I throw physical training or overall training in on the spare day. That's what we've been doing during pre-season. And that's pretty much what we're going to do through the start of the season as well, I think. Some weird fixture days, which has messed up our schedule. But if you have a quick look down the bottom here, this is probably what a normal week will look like, I would say. Physical and outfield at the start of the week, followed by the match prep leading into the league game. Just to give you an idea of what I do part-time training-wise, because I know a lot of you guys do appreciate the tips. As for tactic, we're going to be rocking the same as last season, the lower league version of Concerto, or the direct edition, as I'm actually calling it. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to download this system and have a go yourselves. It's worked a charm. For me and as you can see the squad is almost identical to last season we have widra up top still this lad has been called up to the polish under 19 squad at the end of last season i actually told him you can't play and withdrew him thankfully he didn't spit the dummy out or say anything but he should have some youth caps there for poland uh, so i feel a bit sorry for him with that penny has been fantastic last season so he's going to be playing up front 
We're bringing Nove in on the left, uh, the new signing. I'm just going to give him a go. I'm really intrigued by his technique. So while I'm worried about that work rate and his general attitude, we'll see how he gets on. Kalu is the fast man in behind. He was fantastic last season, our best star player. So we've got to keep him in. I was really happy with Bannon, so I want to keep him um, in that ball-winning midfielder role. And I just love his resolute personality and his general mentals. That means that, unfortunately, Stuart Crilly, who's one of our best central midfielders, is going to play second fiddle initially. We'll see how that goes. That may well change. Pulse is going to get the nod as the advanced playmaker at the start of the season because he's scored four goals from five games in the friendly matches. So I think it's worth the punt. We'll see how we get on with him. If you remember rightly, Tivy was the star man last season and it was those mentals that really drew my eye but I think we need a little bit more class and Hulse has that. McEvitt's going to be playing on the right, real attacking flying wing back, he scored loads of goals last season from corners um, with the short routine, Callow got loads of assists and he's an excellent crosser of the ball so he's going to be starting from the left. We're sticking with Owen at centre back, he's our best defender for sure but like I said Giorgio is coming in as the secondary centre-back. We'll see how he gets on. And then John is going to get the nod initially in goal. But don't worry, Russell, you are going to get some game time, I promise you. I just want to see how John gets on at the start of the season. And you've pre-warned me that you want to retire uh, for next season. So I need to start preparing for the number one role, I am afraid to say. Right, I wanted to quickly talk to you guys as well about contracts. So, the only way we could get Stuart Crilly in was by offering him a ludicrous amount of money for us. £80 appearance fee. Bearing in mind, everybody was lucky to get 20 quid appearance fee last season. So that is way and above what we've been doing. Lucas Widra had loads of interest in him and I started to panic as we'd already lost one or two players. So he's now doubled his wage to £45 a week. Other than that, it's only Bannon. He was another one I was worried about losing because I really do like him. He's now doubled his wage to £50 a week. So that's the only adjustments to the contracts. We can go up to a maximum of about 80 or 90 quid appearance fees. We can't even pay a proper wage yet. So hopefully we don't lose too many of the star players. But looking at the squad depth, it's actually quite good, really. Yes, we only have quality in a couple of places, according to my assistant manager, but we've got good depth throughout. Now, a quick look at tactical familiarity. As you can see, looking pretty good. Uh, the positional and roles are the bit that's accomplished. That's probably because we've got a couple of players who need to gen up on what the system is. And if you have a look at the team dynamics, team cohesions at good. So that's a really great start. Do you remember last season we were in the red um, until the new squad got formed? So that is the upside of starting a season with, by and large, the same players. So we've got Squires Gate coming up. We're at 18th next. Uh, that's the first game of the season. Should be a straightforward victory, I think. Um, and then we're away from home against newly relegated Prescott. We've also had a little bit of this going on, um, takeover rumours. So to be honest, if we get a takeover, that'd be freaking mint because they may try and push the club forward at the moment. The owners that we do have don't seem interested in investing. And we've been seeing a lot of this as well. Players saying that they're opting to stay at the club, which is really promising. Right, guys, we'll come to the first game of the season against Squires Gate. Let's jump into the match engine and see how we get on. Right, it's first game of the season, so it's time for me to pump my fists and tell them that they were favourites. Let's go out there and make sure we show it. So we're coming up against a 4-4-2 here, and we scored already. 12 minutes in, and Lucas Widra is at it again. That long throw seems to do quite well in these lower leagues because the keepers always tend to come off the line, but he didn't quite make it there. So a great start for us, 1-0 up in the first game of the season. Realistically, I want to get promotion this season, I think, guys. We, we really should be going up again. If Last season, we were third favourites to go up. This time, we are the favourites. And with the squad that we've got, the fact that the team is so well bonded already, Widger and Penny look fantastic together, and the fact that we won the FA Vars against teams of this standard, uh, thrashing teams as well, we really should be going up. And remember, this is tier nine. So if we get up to tier eight, we're getting closer to the uh, north-south. Another promotion, and we just need a few more. 
under a little bit of pressure there, but we've managed to clear the ball. This is where the direct system comes in really well. Back to front quickly. Kalu, he can take on a man. Is he going to get crossing? Yes, he does. To Widra, who tucks the ball home. Second goal of the season for Lucas Widra, but that was a superb assist from Kalu. Got right down to the byline there, took on his man, and it's just this... Cross into the middle. May have been a bit of a fluke because it looked um, a bit too far back for my liking, but Widra scores. Right, it's half time, guys. 2 0 up. We've had a few chances and a 0.9 on the XG. So, not a bad start to the season. It's really good to see Widra still looking classy, even at this level. It's not the 4 and 5 nils yet of what we expected last season. But we are up a level, so we may not be getting those sort of score lines as often. But we won't speak too soon because we've got a corner here. Are we going to go short from Callow? We are. Kalou. Callow again. Crosses it in. It looks like their centre back's got an injury, Burgess. Free kick. Hulse just over the bar. You saw him score one of those last season right towards the back end. And we're now back on with another long throw. Nove picks up that one, but the keeper fumbles and oh, Hulse just over. Another throw in. Callow to Widra. Widger works the ball inside to Bannon. Bannon goes over the top to Kalu, who finds Penny. That was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It may not be Tiki Taka football. It's as close as you're going to get to it in the lower leagues. Widger with the ball into the middle. Bannon the ball winning midfielder. Chips it over to Kalu. Headers down. Penny. That's a great first time finish. 3 0 to press which here's. And we're straight into another highlight. Widger in behind. That's got to be a penalty. Right through the back of Widra. Widra's going to get his chance for the hat-trick. And he scores. Widra doing Widra things. That's his third goal of the season in the first game of the season. There's a highlight here for Squires Gate. But easily decepted. And Burgess brings the ball back to Howarth. Nice ball over the top. And that could have been a brilliant goal. But it was offside anyway. Made a couple of substitutions, guys, because this game's all wrapped up and I don't want too many players getting fatigued because the next game's only in a couple of games' time. So we brought Sewell on. Um, the new left winger was pretty terrible. He was on a 6.4. I'm not sure he's going to last very long there. That work rate really is impacting his performance. Harkins come on um, and we scored. Mark Sewell off the bench. First goal of the season. Uh, Harkins come on for the main man, Widra. We're going to get him rested up because he's so vital. And I brought Tivy on for Hulse. Um, I just didn't want to bring Bannon off just yet. So with 15 minutes remaining, we have now got a 5-0 scoreline. 17 shots, 8 on target, 2.43 on the XG. Perfect start to the season. And it's not going to get ruined just yet. That's gone over the bar. Seconds remaining, guys. And that is it. Full time. 5-0, what a start to the season. Squires Gate did not have a single shot on target. Those average ratings look really, really good as well. So I'm delighted with that. Let's tell the lads I'm happy with the results. And that's going to kick off the year very nicely indeed, chappies. Right, guys, we won't uh, drag this episode out for too long. I think we'll keep it just as one game for today. I'm going to try and get through a few matches and maybe come back in a couple of months time. We've got a hell of a lot of games in August, so I might get through the bulk of them, possibly come back somewhere in September. We have got the FA Cup, guys. We've got the first preliminary round um, <laughs> in uh, the back end of September. So we'll see who we get for them and uh, what sort of game we want to come back with there. Right, um, one thing I did forget to show you was the friendlies. Again, I think it's important you understand how I schedule things. So you'll notice the dates is pretty much every um, three days we had a friendly in pre-season. Quite a lot for some people's taste, but I find it's the best way of getting match fitness up without having to schedule that within your training. And that means you can do more match practice, which, as we said, is vital. Okay, guys, um, if you enjoyed today's episode, I'd much appreciate a thumbs up. Like I said, it really does help the channel. If you're new, don't forget to do the whole subscribe stuff. And I'll see you very soon for the next episode in tier 10 to the top. Thanks so much for following along, guys, and I'll catch you next time. See you later. <laughs>